between this album and the other Quiet Right albums is the fact that uh, more time was spent on composing the material. I personally used my computer to write song after song after song and then weeded out things I didn't think were as good as others and then would re-record a song over and over again until I got it right and had the lyrics all written before I came in as opposed to before I'd come in and then it would sort of casually at the last minute write the words. This way I had sung them in the studio and then for the most part we got to play the songs live. First thing that comes to mind is the fact that it's the first record that the band has ever done that included all of the original Metal Health band members, Kevin Bro, Carlos Cavazzo, Rudy Sarso, and myself, doing completely and totally original material written by the band specifically for, for this record. And uh, that's something that's really never been done before. With this album, uh, most of the material we, we were able to perform live in front of an audience, and uh, we were much more rehearsed. I'd have to say we've managed to put a lot of new elements into our old sound. The record was produced by an English gentleman by the name of John Rollo. I really didn't realize uh, some of the things, A, how, how well prepared the band was and how hungry they were to really make this, this really work. And, and the standard of the playing, which really made the, dictated how we should record. The record was recorded at Rumbo Studios in Hollywood. The lovely where we're at right now, the Captain's Neal Studio. We're going to have a, the captain come in and play little keyboards, but unfortunately he was with the, the Tenille. Uh, the studio itself has quite a pedigree. Uh, they've done everything from Guns N' Roses to uh, No Doubt, you know, so they pretty much run the gamut. The room sounds great. It um, has a very great live vibe to it. To record this record, we really had the band set up as a, as a band. Uh, we were lucky enough to be in a Quite a nice size room. This particular record, I used Jackson guitars and um, Gibson double neck mm -hmm. acoustic guitars, Ovation acoustic guitars. We did two of the Marshall sounds and two of the J Station sounds. And the J Station sounds were done with a Gibson guitar, and the Marshall sounds were done with a Jackson guitar. Uh, Ludwig drums, uh, Sabian cymbals, and the main mic system. Um, as far as the Ludwig drums are concerned, the, uh, all the drum sizes are in traditional depth. That is, they're not the extended drums. The kick drum is a 14 by 26, uh, rack tom is 12 by 15, floor tom is 16 by 15, which is unusual. Instead of using a 16 inch floor tom with an 18, I'd rather use the 15 inch floor tom with a 16 by 16 floor tom. Um, they project better, they have a lot more clarity. And uh, the snare drums, I used two different snare drums. Uh, they were both 6.5 by 14. One was a pure maple shell, and the other one was a combination of maple and poplar which gives you a little more uh, top end to the drum. Um, all the drum heads were Ludwig uh, Weathermaster heads, and they were uh, medium weights. Um, the cymbals were all Sabian. Uh, I used a variety of cymbals. Uh, I changed ride cymbals the way guitar players change um, guitars. So I used a variety of ride cymbals to create different tones, some lighter, uh, some heavier than others. And the balance of the cymbals were... Uh, Sabian Pro 8 crashes and um, Will Calhoun model uh, 14 inch hi hats. I use an Ashdown amplifier and uh, with a variety of basses, uh, PD Cyrus, a Warrior bass, uh, another PD 5 string bass, and uh, the strings were D Markley SR2000, and I used the uh, Zan Sam PS1. And a BPA for the effects. A Digitech BPA, best bass band. Frankie Benelli is uh, he's the best manager I think the band's ever had. He's the only manager the choir rights ever had that I can trust. I also playing on stage with Frankie is a pleasure because he's a singer's dream. He plays around the vocal. I started playing with Frankie Benelli way back in the, uh, the early 70s. But see, yeah, we basically grew up, you know, playing together in the uh, in the Florida circuit, and then we have been British bands before we actually played together in Choir Rock. Frankie Vanelli, a good businessman, smart, intelligent, uh, knows what he wants, that's for sure. Incredible drummer, who just, to me, to make him play more than one take was almost sinful. Bass player Rudy is terrific. He's probably the most popular bass player in all of rock and roll. The fans adore him. Rudy and I go, go way back. We have uh, we share a musical history that, uh, that predates uh, most of the people who are probably watching this. <laughs> Rudy Sarzo is probably more along the, line, along the lines of me, 
He's a more laid back, relaxed person. And so what with Rudy, I mean, incredible bass player. Our guitar player Carlos is uh, has he, uh, the only guy probably who could have stepped into the shoes of Randy Rose because he's nothing like Randy and he has no problems with trying to be necessarily the number one guitar hero of all time. He plays the right parts for the right songs without trying to, to do anything that's like competing with like say the, the number one shredder of all time. And Carlos Cavazzo, not only is he a brilliant guitarist, but he really uh, came up to the plate on this record. He did some of the best guitar solos I think I've heard. But also he's got really, really incredible rhythm chops. A lot of guitar players these days don't have that. Uh, Carlitos is, is not only is he a great guitar player, but he's also a great friend. Some guitar parts with Carlos who really, really knew what he wanted, did his homework, came back with really good solos. I think Kevin has been um, has been underrated as a singer. He's uh, a lot of people think that he's the, the voice of just the bang your heads and the come off feel the noise of the world, but uh, he's actually come a long way as far as his vocal styling is concerned. And uh, I think on this new record, you're going to hear a different Kevin DeBro. Kevin is uh, also is one of my oldest friends too, because we even roomed together before I, I joined Ozzy. I was actually living with Kevin. Starting with Kevin, he's uh, definitely goes out and gets what he wants. And Kevin, I mean. He just seemed really well prepared. He, he seemed really well prepared with his lyrics. Uh, his vocal takes were unreal. I mean, every take you could catch his intonation, his pitch, perfect. If you bring it to the show, we will sign it. Well, hey, hey, absolutely, and thank you so much for your continued support. Uh, we won't ever let you down. That's right. If you if you're watching us, that means you bought our new record, and we oh so appreciate it. Do we not? Hey, been lonely in the saddle since my horse died. I, I don't know what that means. Me either, but uh, we do like this record. Stays. Yeah, this record is. This record is. Uh, I think it's the best thing we've done probably since Metal Health, uh, and we what, put a lot of effort into it. Hmm? No, that was quite right. God, those Damn. guys.